We play and call it work. Welcome, Wargamers. Josh and Lee here to bring you this week's Sit and Talk. Uh, we're going to go over some of the questions that were sent in by you folks and do our best to answer them. A little bit of housekeeping before we get going is remember next week is going to be Quirk answering questions. So any questions you have for him, leave in this video, not in the vault component of the video. And ask him whatever you want to and he will do his best to answer. Uh, what can we have him call him this week? I'm trying to think we can, we can change, we can evolve. I just think it's nice to have someone actually who remembers who's next. It's always nice. Yeah, it's very important uh, <laughs> to me to make sure you know you're. Don't forget about your uh, co-workers. Yeah. I guess he's my boss, so it's different. Anywho. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions for Quirk, leave them in the comments below. Uh, this week, let's uh, let's just do his initials, which, uh, you know, his name is David Beverly Quirk. So D-B-Q. Sounds like a good him. sandwich. It kind of does. So mm -hmm. leave questions for David Beverly Quirk. Just give him the initials. I'm kind of like the Bevs. The Bevs? The Bevs is pretty good, but the I mean, I want to I want to keep it fresh and exciting for okay. him every week he checks. Uh, so let's get right into these questions. We're going to answer half an hour or so worth of questions here and then jump in the vault to answer the rest. And even though, like, I mean, some questions are directed towards myself, some questions are directed towards Lee, uh, we're probably going to both answer them. In. That's kind of why I like doing it with another um, staff member because you, you get some interesting conversation, which I think is what people likes to li like to listen to yep. instead of, my boring Eeyore voice. Don't tell anyone, but it's on. kind of our mini re-roll. Mm. <laughs> I, I love that show. Yeah. Um, okay, so from the, the first question we have here is Stingray Bill. Hey Josh, if you were to create one of the missing legions, what would their strengths be? Close combat, ranged shooting, armored combat. What would their primark be like? Is he loyal, a traitor, or rogue? Enemy of chaos and all aliens, but wants to rule the Imperium himself. Uh, I am, I myself am looking to build both legions and have their lore done, but was curious as to what other players' visions as to what happened to them, and if they'd like to see these legions join the current gathering. Ooh, I don't know. That's okay. That's a heavy question. So we're gonna break this down a little bit by little bit. Lee and I will kind of give our thoughts uh, before I get into it. We're talking about the second and eleventh, right? Yeah. 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 Um. <clears throat> So with a lot of this stuff, it goes back to some of the old uh, lore for Warhammer. And this one, as far as the Missing Legions go, brush up on, I believe it is your Roman history to understand why they are have two Missing Legions. But okay, so if we were to flesh them out, I for one like the fact that they haven't fleshed out the two of them. Mm -hmm. uh, if anything, they might, you know, I wouldn't be disappointed if they fleshed out one of them a little bit. If there's a cool story associated, but both, I don't know. I don't know. But it's established, I mean, that there were probably Primarchs for them. Yeah, there were Primarchs. Yeah. There's, there's a couple it's instances. Yeah. Uh, so what would their strengths be? I don't know. Like, all the Legions have their own kind of different thing. Yeah. But I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on this? I'm, I'm drawing a blank on what I think their strengths would be. Because all the Legions have... They're kind of typecast things that they're yeah, and then they into. have like their opposite, right? Like the other side of their coin, right? Aerial combat. Yeah, somebody oh, that would actually be really cool, like the, the the Marines version of the Marines. Yeah, one that's focused to you know entirely on fleet based actions. Yeah, they grew up on a mostly water world, and they have flyers instead of tanks. Just yeah, so something that is entirely air support. That could be a cool idea, because yeah, that's that's something you don't see them. The, the it's kind of integrated into the regular m Marines and yeah. That could be interesting. Um, the female Primark would be cool. The fe the whole female Primark thing, yeah, because it's been back and forth. Yeah. Uh, so you could have that group that yeah, there there was something that wasn't quite right with the gene seed. Things didn't take off the way that the Emperor wanted them to. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be unsuccessful. Um, I like that. Now, one of the other things uh, I've seen floating around, I think this is actually based on a thread from Volter and Chainsword, is they talked about the different aspects of the Emperor. Yeah. 
and the different aspects, uh, you know, in, in, in keying each Primark up. Can you think of any that don't fit? Like, what, what's missing from the Emperor's psyche? Like, he could have the, you know, the Primarchs represent. The one I've seen is they talked about basically the Emperor's emperorness. The Emperor being the one in charge. Yeah. You know, the... the what, what was the aspect, aspect that Horus got? Oh. Because I remember reading this. And that's why the whole theory of he killed... When Horus killed Sanguinius. Yep. And the Emperor got back his compassion. That way he couldn't bring himself to kill Horus. Okay, I can see that. I mean, like, I think Horus... Horus for me is the War Master. I mean... Like the General? The General, yeah. yeah. As in, you know, leading the troops. Yeah, and Gulliman is like the... The statesman. Yeah. You know, so some kind of you know, combination of Gimen and Horus almost, I guess. You know, the emperor's yeah. emperorness where he is the one in charge. Yeah. Because there, there's, you know, depending on what parts of the lore you like to read, if you look at some of the Space Wolf stuff, when they are talking about uh, going after the Thousand Sons, uh, Russ is saying, like, this isn't the first time we've done this. Yeah, and there's, then, then they talk about they're not allowed to talk, to, talk about it. It's even somewhere else that uh, I think it was. Well, I'm not sure. It was, it was a couple of Primarchs talking about their two fallen brothers, and then the other one shuts him up and says, "Yeah, we're not supposed to talk about them." Yeah, like we don't speak about them. Well, I think there's a scene with Dorn and Malkador, the Sigilite, yeah. who's not a Primarch, but you know yeah. he's he's talking about them, and they were looking at the statues of the Primarchs, and there's the two that are covered up. Yeah, and says, "Well, you know, we don't." Yeah, so there were two don't, primarchs don't, and two full legions. Right, don't even think about that because, you know, they can't return, whatever. Yeah. And then if you go Unremembered Empire, I believe, Guillemin, uh, when he creates his second Imperium, because yeah. he doesn't know what's happening with the actual Imperium because he's cut off by the warp storms, uh, he's got his table, his, his council table, and he's got seats for the two... M missing primarchs? Right. Yeah. And I think it was the lion said something about it, and he's like, it, Gaiman's basically going like it's symbolic, like it's, yeah. no, even though they're they can't be here, you know, they can't return. No. Uh, they're they're still going to have their seats at the yeah. table. So, yeah, I, I'd like to see actually the the aerial combat's an interesting one, the aerial and void combat. Yeah. Uh, what would the Primarch be like? Uh, like I said, maybe the the, the basically the emperor's emperorness of being. The one charge, yep. um, and that I guess could fit into the narrative of the space. I'd, actually, I'd have to take a look at the list of which Primarch represents what to see what's missing because I don't have it in my head right now. Yeah, but I'd like to think that you know maybe that could have been one where there there was you know the it, it was the emperor's ambition essentially. Yeah, um, that one of the Primarchs maybe overstepped his boundaries. Yeah, and wanted to be the you know the master of mankind and. Maybe he was the one that got smacked down by Russ. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, it, it, it's an interesting thing to talk there's about. There's also a theory about their legions weren't destroyed. It was only the primary. Right, because there's talk about the, the Ultramarines being way bigger of a yeah. legion than they should be. And that the um, word bearers were an overly large legion as well. Yeah. So there's talk about, yeah, that maybe the Primarchs were wiped out. And the Marines were folded in, or at least maybe the recruits or something. Yeah. Some, some, something's going on. Yeah. Uh, you know, loyal trader. We could probably rogue. do a whole sit and talk just on this question. Right. <laughs> so trader rogue. I, I assume you know he he would have been somebody that went rogue. Uh, but as far as fleshing them out, I personally I like the idea that there there's nothing there. Yeah. I really. That's why we can have talks like this. That's, yeah. It's fun. All right, next one. Let's jump into. We did our best on that one. If you want, you can just always shoot me an email because I'd be yeah, glad to talk at length about this stuff. Uh, next is William Kaw. At Josh, what fictional race would you add into Warhammer 40k universe, like the Xenomorphs? Now there's okay, so there's a bajillion different fictional races in there already. So I'm assuming you're talking about adding a different one to the tabletop. I would like to see an actual race. I can't remember the the, the names of anything right now. Um, I, I wouldn't mind seeing something non-humanoid, but not as alien as Tyranids. Yeah. Something, you know, get away from the whole collective hive mind, get something that is uh, sentient and aware, but something that's not your standard humanoid, which I think, like, everything is right now. Yeah. I think the only non-humanoid race is Tyranids, 
and they've got the whole hive mind kind of thing going on. So personally, I'd want to see an alien race that looks non-humanoid, but still would function like a regular army, you know? Yeah. I, I think that could be cool. Yeah, like the, in the 30K, you have the, what are they called? The lair? Yeah, the la the lair. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and the which mega are, arachnids are pretty. The mega arachnids, yeah, the mega arachnids were Tyranid ask. Yeah, you know, but they're, the, they're different though. Right. So there's yeah, there's a couple different things, but I'd like to see them explore something non-humanoid in shape. Yep. You know, a proper alien, but not going as far as like the hive mind Tyranid style. Du, 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 du. Okay, next one is Daniel T M U at Lee. I remember when you first got hired at Mini Wargaming, you preferred to not be filmed and were visibly uncomfortable. Kind of deer in the headlights. Whenever <laughs> Matt would point the camera at you. Now you seem more than comfortable in front of the camera. Was that a conscious choice for you or did it just happen? Keep up the awesome. I will. Because I do the awesome. <laughs> I think it's just getting used to the camera. I mean, I'm still uncomfortable. But, yeah, you just keep doing the same thing. It's it's like when you play live music yeah. or whatever. First time was just, it's it's horrible. Yeah, but then you just get used to it. I still I still am I, I I still get this this crazy anxiety every time I go in front of the camera. Yeah, every single time I still haven't been able to shake it. I think most of us do. Yeah, I mean, there's some people that are a little bit more comfortable. I'm still super uncomfortable in front of the camera. Um, I'm still the chubby kid that stutters though, so maybe that's <laughs> why. <laughs> Uh, okay, Daniel TMU at jo yeah, you're more comfortable with somebody else. Yeah, yeah, I'm the I, same I could never do a sit and talk by myself. Oh, mine were terrible. Yeah, when that's I why by we myself. prefer to do them together. Uh, I find myself boring. Well, we are. Oh, <laughs> so uh, Daniel TMU at Josh, I've really been enjoying the side scroller campaign you were doing with Dave. I noticed your energy is super high compared to your normally Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh like <laughs> tones, and I think it's awesome. <laughs> Okay. Uh, um, uh. Also, I like how much you and Dave really gotten into making it feel right for a side scroller. Let's face it, though, Dave's more, shall we call it, off the cuff style does not make for the most consistent GM style. My question for you: Would you please write the next one and GM it for Dave? As far as that, it, okay, the writing stuff is fun. Uh, I go back to the fact that I am not an educated man by any stretch of the imagination so I'm glad that people enjoy the stuff that I write um, but it's still always a struggle I'm trying to get better yeah, I, wanna, I wanna take some courses on something yeah. well because I'm writing mostly like I'm writing script for somebody else to say yeah so I've got the idea of the backstory of how you know e even when hearing the other guys read stuff of how I want it read um, but I'm not gonna direct them no. and reading it myself well Eeyore uh, wouldn't be the most exciting thing to listen to <laughs> Yeah, I like to be involved with that. Uh, Matt and Dave are both getting me more involved with their campaigns, uh, whether it's being in them or helping write the story, some of the rules, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. I think that the big thing, too, is my, my boring voice is something I will talk to. And I think most of the guests who have come in have figured this out. When I speak a certain way, it is me concentrating on enunciating properly and not swearing yeah, or that, saying that, other inappropriate things. Yeah, but it's, it, you can tell when yeah. people are trying not to swear. Well, especially if you've, you've heard them swear. So you, you guys, for the most part, hear the same voice that I use when I used to teach swim lessons. Yeah. Other than like being like, when teaching like the little the little tiny nuggets, yeah. you know, and then you're just kind of goofy high energy, but that, that gets annoying to like... Yeah, but you have to you consciously watch like, turn the swearing off, because uh, we swear a lot. We do. Right. Well, I mean, like, in, not even so much just swearing, just inappropriate jokes and all that yeah. other stuff. It's, we're a bunch of guys. I mean, right. We are rather... Yeah. So that's, of course. That's what most <laughs> of it is. And some of us are better at turning it off than others. With me, I need to speak differently to make sure that I am pronouncing my words properly and not uh, saying something I shouldn't be. So you're basically thinking before you speak? Well, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing, too, is I have a bad habit of... Um, I don't know if I'm actually a funny person, but I find myself hilarious. Yeah, you do. 
well, I, 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 I'm a funny person. And I have a bad habit around the office of whenever somebody says something, I'll make some kind of a joke super fast. And even before like, I realize what I'm saying, it's out of my mouth. Yeah. And hmm. They're not always kind. Or appropriate. They're often I'm, neither I think of I'm actually more un, like inappropriate. Because I have no filter when it comes to jokes. Right. But you don't enjoy making people feel uncomfortable as much as I do. Probably not. No. I do enjoy it, but not to the same extent. Okay. Next Anywho. question. We have Bill Dratt. Uh, Josh, do you still giggle every time someone <laughs> says the word castigator? There we go. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know if everybody understands why I find that so funny. Um, <laughs> the reason I giggle when Matt or Quirk say the word castigator is that they both kept giggling at the word castigator when they did the um, uh, Fall of Cadia review. And I, yeah, is the castigator bolt pistol? Right, yeah. which is not, it's not funny, but they found it really funny. Because I think even though they were saying it right, I think they got it in their mind that it was the castrator bolt pistol. Yeah. And their reaction to that was the hilarious one. So yeah, I still giggle when people say that. Um, it's kind of funny. Well, when those two guys say it, because it's just such a funny memory for me. Okay, um, Patep. At Lee, mm. I've just finished painting my first unit of Zangor si uh, Skyfires for Age of Sigmar. The models are very nice and incredibly detailed, but all that detail took a long time to paint. I would like to add a big block of foot Zangors to my army, but I'm not sure I can face painting 30 of them. Ha! 30, that's adorable. My question is, <laughs> even though, you get paid to do it though. I know. Even though Games Workshop is really pushing the boundaries of the quality of their plastic models, do you think that some of the designs have become too detailed and intricate for models that are meant to be rank and file? It's nice for characters or centerpiece models, but is it needed for a whole army? Even leaning aside the painting aspect, there's the practical issues of transporting and using them on the tabletop when there are so many thin and delicate weapons, tentacles, spikes, and tree branches. Yeah. I, I agree. It's uh, The example I like to use is basically, it seems to be the trend with at least Games Workshop. Okay. That armies with a low model count have less detail on them. Like Space Marines. This is your standard Space Marine. Okay. Uh, there's not a lot of detail. No, there really isn't. But then you go over to like Orcs or Tyranids or Skaven. Guardsmen. Guardsmen. Yeah. Or Skaven or Goblins and all those these swarm armies. Each model has a ton of detail on it. And... Uh, and the whole, like, fixed pose thing, for people who don't like, people who like to do stuff out of the box, Okay. it's, you just snap together, done. But most of them are, like, standing like this, and how are you going to put that into a foam case? Yeah, there's a bunch of, there's more and more monopose stuff, so we're talking a little bit like the Kill Team Cassius for Death Watch and things like that. Yeah. Um, models that are stuck in a certain way, unless you do some heavy conversion work, even as opposed the, to posable, like, marines and all that. Yeah, even the Zangors. Are they pretty well stuck in the pose? Basically, uh, you have... It's weird, because you have the legs. And then you have... Because the arms... Mm -hmm. It's actually from here. So the joint's here. So you have, like, the, the chest muscle, okay. the shoulder, and the arm. And you're not going to be able to pose that. You have to just... And that's the way it's going to be. Gotcha. So, yeah, having arms all over the place and, like, spikes and... All kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's annoying to transport them. That's why most people just put magnets on them and put them on plates. Well, I think that's part of the reason why Marines have always been so popular. Yeah, because I mean, they're, they're, they're cool. They're, like they're, this. they're easy to paint. They're easy to put together. Yeah. You can pose them. Uh, so, yeah, some of these new kits. I mean, they look gorgeous. Don't get me wrong. I love the direction they're going with yep. the plastics. But I think they should tone it down a bit. I could, I could, I, yeah, I, I can't help but, uh, agree like with the that. new Celestine model. It's a gorgeous model. Character pieces I didn't get away with, but I mean, like, do you get more than, like, if you had an army that looks like that? Yeah, true. But that's kind of what they're doing, though. Yeah. That's the thing. But I do love their, their stuff. It's really, really cool. But yeah, it's. Transportability, yeah. I, yeah. The magnetized stuff, though, like the the more stuff you can magnetize, and the fact that you can take your models apart to transport them. Yeah. Because people always think magnets just to swap weapons and options. 
I like using magnets for transporting minis. Yeah. The fact that you can take arms off stuff. Because, yeah, those those delicate weapons that break, magnetize the arm and just take the whole arm with weapon off, and that's a lot easier to transport. Yeah, you can even, like, a guy with, like, a space marine with an autocannon. Yep. I mean, you've got, like, the cone of the model, and then you've got a gun sticking out. I know. And if you can just, like, magnetize the shoulders and just pull I the just, whole yep. weapon with the arms off. Yep. Done. So, yeah. All right. I'm only going to say, try to pronounce this name because you're awesome. It's a Lassie. Lassie? Lassie? How do you say it? Say it, say it rightly. At the bottom. Yeah, I've, I'm guessing he's Danish, so I'd say Lassie. I can't remember where you were from originally. All right. Um, so, at Josh and Lee, if you are there, this is Mac Hawk. <laughs> Yeah, that name hasn't been dis discussed around the office at all. This guy, we went, we went back and forth, and actually we've emailed back and forth a bunch. Oh, that's so funny. Because um, in his accent, when he pronounces it, it sounds, it sounds like, different than when I pronounce it. Yeah. It sounds like one word. Yeah, with me, it, yeah. You, they blend together too much. But anyways, uh, on to your question. At Josh and Lee, if you are there, most of us know the problem of explaining the hobby to outsiders. How do you explain the hobby to people that have no idea what miniature wargaming is? And what do you say when an outsider asks what you do for a living? Hum. Well, it, I think it's easier for me than you. Is it easier for you? Yeah. Okay. People ask me, what, what do you do? Well, I paint. Yep. And they automatically have a connection. Okay, like paint houses or... No, I paint figures. Oh, Okay. And then I can, if they ask, I can go into what they were used for. So, it automatically has like... An easier transition? Yeah. Yeah, see, like when I talk about what I do, like I say I'm a content producer, I do gaming videos, and people usually assume video games, because that's what's yeah. more popular, and go, no, you know, basically I usually lead in with like board games, talking about board games and stuff like that, and then the differences between board games and miniature games. Um... It, it, yeah, it's not like an overly tough question because usually people aren't like super intense about it. But and you can even, kind of gauge right off, like early in the conversation, if they're actually interested in learning more. Right. Yeah, you can usually tell like how much information. So if they're you like, have. oh, okay, and you just you don't push it. Yeah, I do gaming videos. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, it, it's relatively easy, but yeah, usually you know I'll explain it based upon uh, board games and stuff like that. Because that seems to be the one. But this is the funny thing too. More and more, um, some of the guys we've had in are uh, armed forces here in Canada. Uh, ben, Tom, and a couple of the other guys too. And it's funny because we get talking about stuff and these guys that don't talk about their hobby, they're yeah. like, I didn't know you played. I didn't know you played. And even like bringing up guys that, uh, my buddy Kiefer, who I haven't talked to in forever. i got to get in touch with him again. But my buddy Kiefer used to come in and play here all the time before I was working here, like when they still had the store and all that. And so these two guys that are in the reserves, and I brought up, uh, because they were talking about people that used to play, and I'm like, you guys remember Kiefer? Like, do you? And they're like, yeah. Wait, he didn't play, did he? Yeah. Yeah, he, he totally did. He was like, he was it's hugely like into this stuff. keep it He's, secret. People do keep it secret. So I don't go out of my way to keep it secret, but I also don't go out of the way to throw it in people's face, because it's a weird job being... I mean, for all intents and purposes, I'm an internet personality. That's what I get paid to do, right? Yeah. To play games and be entertaining. Um, so, yeah. It, it's it's different. I think different. the harder part is explaining how we actually make a living. Make money. Yeah. That's usually, that's more the questions that we yeah. get is, uh, um, people are like, okay, I understand the game that you play. How does that support you? Um, and then, you know, talking about the vault. Because uh, that's the, the, the major source of income yeah. for the company is the vault. Because there's a lot of people out there doing this kind of stuff and producing some really wicked content, but not... I don't, I don't know how many of them can actually make a living out of it. Um, so yeah, the the tougher explain is usually the vault and how the vault works, and that there's you know an awesome yeah, community out there that's interested in supporting us. Yeah, and the follow-up question is always like, so people actually pay to watch this? Yeah. And my go-to is sports. Yeah, I mean... Don't get me wrong, like, I like watching hockey every once in a while, but I'm not that hugely into it. Yeah. Uh, I have more fun participating in the sports than watching them. Yeah. And that, yeah, sometimes helps create that connection so people understand a little bit better. Yeah. 
But uh, it is weird. It's, it's, if you think about it. You know what? Everything's weird. Yeah. You're I'm weird. A, well, this thing is, uh, it used to be a lifeguard, then I sold guns, and now I play with toy soldiers on the internet. Yeah. I, Isn't life awesome? I know. I've explained that to people, and they're like... You know, I say it because I don't know, it's my life, it doesn't sound that exciting, but they're like, that's actually kind of an interesting yeah. couple jobs yeah, you've it's, had. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a niche thing. All right, let's zing through a couple of these here. That would do we're, we're, we always run late, it's Lee and I. Yeah, we're good. How much How much longer are we supposed to have in this video? Uh, the first one? Ten minutes. Oh, yeah, we're, we're good. Okay, next up we got Crazy4394. Josh! Can you give a shout out to the Battle Brothers crew in Milwaukee? Thanks. What up, Battle Brothers crew in Milwaukee? Come play games. Or send me pictures of stuff you painted. Uh, also, I like it. It's still my favorite I part know. of this job. I I'm know. getting emails. I like the answer. I, yeah. Well, because like, people send me such awesome stuff. Okay, but I'm getting more and more now that people send me stuff and I get super jealous because I can't paint. <laughs> like, I'm <laughs> terrible. And people are like, um, you know, I'm uh, pretty new to painting, but check this thing out. You know, what do you think? And I'm going like, oh, that's... Is that when you slam your phone down and cry? I just cry. Oh, okay. I just go cry in the bathtub. And people send me these, these gorgeous figures that they paint, and I'm like, okay, I've been dabbling in painting for years, and you, that's great. You, in two months, you can paint that level. Yeah. This is nicer than anything I've seen in quite a long time. <laughs> so, yeah, there's more and more people send me... And don't get me wrong, like, I still love the pictures. Uh, and I love them so much more. But I, I'm at the point now where I get depressed at the stuff where it's like, this is the first army I ever painted, you know? Hopefully it doesn't look too bad. And there, there's people that are being like genuine when they say yeah. that. There's people that are kind of, you know, just being yeah, funny I mean, about Yeah, people it. insecure, I mean. Uh, but yeah, the, the fantastic level that people are able to do stuff at. Yeah. Because uh, now, like half the time people email me stuff, I'm like, do you do commission work? <laughs> and, <laughs> not enough of you people do. No. Okay, uh, also regular or code red Mountain Dew? I don't, not, neither? I don't, I don't really drink Mountain Dew. You're not extreme enough. No, apparently I'm not extreme enough. No, I've never really liked Mountain Dew. Um, I've been back and forth on sugary drinks. If anything, I drink uh, Coke now, just Coca-Cola, because I don't like it that much. Uh, but I, I always drink way too much pop. Yep. And it's an issue. So yeah. I've got myself to the point now that the overly sugary stuff, overly sweet stuff, doesn't taste good, and yeah, Coke like, is like monster and stuff. Just, oh, it's yeah. gross. So I'll drink like you know uh, a bottle of Coca Cola and feel super gross after. Not yeah, you're all like clammy and right. Yeah, it's not good. Um, my one weakness for like because I love carbonated and fizzy drinks is uh, ginger beer. Yeah, like ginger ale, but super strong ginger ale. Uh, so there's there's no alcohol content. You do content. like a purple drink though. Yeah, there's yeah it's like, like uh, a, grape juice kind of stuff. Yeah, the one that Arizona's put out. Yeah, that used to be because growing up it was it was uh, grape pop, grape soda. Yeah, man, I love that. Yeah, I remember I used to love like Kool Aid when I was a kid. Okay. Yeah. When I tried some recently, it was just like it, it was like eating sugar. It was gross. Gross. All right, next we got MPC two one six three. These are like robots <laughs> messaging me now. At Josh, can you give us your Imperial Fist painting secrets? I've got 300 or so to paint and haven't been sold on any method yet. Chris is a good one, but I'll be 90 before I finish using it. Yeah, Josh, give him some painting tips. Uh, well, it's the same as everything else. Uh, somebody else did it? No, Steve did most of the spraying. Yeah. Uh, Steve had a keen interest in... Because Steve's the kind of guy, like, I love learning uh, lore and rules and new games. Steve loves learning how to paint different yeah. stuff. And he likes testing different techniques. So I had Marines sitting around. I didn't know what I wanted to do. They were probably going to become Night Lords. And then we, you know, I've been really pushy on people who should start playing more Loyalist Legions. How, yeah. You know, everybody start a second Legion. Um... And nobody really claimed the Imperial Fist. And I really liked them, but I didn't want to deal with them. So Steve basically said, hey, I want to practice uh, spraying yellow. I want to try some different techniques out. I want to experiment. Uh, and I said, if you want, take my Marines. And as long as you, you, said, you paint them whatever yellow you want, however you want, as long as you're willing to match the scheme for me. Yeah. 
and then I'll just take them, you know, and either I'll do some of the base detail stuff or Lee will do some of the detailed stuff that I don't want to touch because I'm terrified of trying to touch yellow up, especially if it's been sprayed because you really can't fix no, it. No, not really. Um, so yeah, it was done with an airbrush. It was done with my Awada. And as far as the colors, because he uses, he uses Minotaur, I think, for everything. Yeah. Uh, shoot me an email and I can get you the exact formula, but they're actually painted up from black as well. Yep. They were not a white base coat, um, but I think there's four or five steps to get in the yellow there. But yeah, shoot me an email and I'll get you the exact uh, colors on them. Uh, next we've got Cogsrow. Dear Josh, would you be willing to bring your snakes to work for one day for those of us who are fellow snake lovers? Uh, we can see what you've got. Um, okay, so obviously I didn't bring any with me today. The only snake I have right now, because um, my reptile collection is a lot smaller than what it used to be, just because I don't have as much time to take care of everything properly, is I've got a Mexican rosy boa. Sounds uh, pretty. It's a really cool snake. It's this really kind of... Uh, I don't think I've seen that one. No. It's got a... Because I'm not good with colors, but... It's, it's got it's it's stripes two stripes running in the back of it but the main color of it's this kind of cream color and then the stripes are this kind of chocolatey brown okay and it's the most docile slow snake ever it's my favorite because they are the most handleable personable little snakes out there yeah and they are just so is it your ehaw slow. snake my what your ehaw snake you know my ehaw 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 yeah just like yeah it's um I like snakes. So yeah, maybe I'll bring it in. I don't know who here is afraid of snakes, and I never do, because I know somebody's going to ask me, I will never do that chase somebody around with a snake or another animal no. and try to scare them. Um, growing up, I've always been big on, you know, getting along with the animals, everybody plays nice, and you know, oh. you'd be respectful of stuff. I'll try to have people push their boundaries, like if you're, if you're not comfortable with snakes, but you'd be willing to be comfortable around them, I will totally work with that. But I never do that, like, here's my animal, I'm going to chase you around with it like yeah, no it's no. that's silly so don't ask me to do that but yeah i might bring the maybe i'll bring the snake in the next day other than that yeah the reptiles i have uh, nothing that gets handled i've got a madagascar giant day gecko who is cool to look at but they're not really a handling tolerant pet and i've got a leopard gecko who i have a long-standing agreement with uh that i just don't hold because i never really liked it Used to hold it every once in a while, but it just got yeah. cranky. It's old now, though. Is uh, it? I got that. I'm 29 now. I got that gecko when I was 12. Right? Okay, wow. So it's a 17-year-old leopard gecko that still, like, gets super excited. Like, when I put the crickets in, it'll chase them around, but it twitches its tail super fast when it gets excited before it bites them. Like, it's awesome. Yeah. That's um, an old lizard. Yeah, it's 17. I'm pretty sure, like, on average, if they're well taken care of, they live between 10 to 20 years. Yeah. So even with that, uh, Dilbert <laughs> is uh, still getting up there in age. But, yeah. yeah. He's beating the average, so that's good. Yeah, which is pretty sweet. I think the world record's, like, 26 or something, though, like something goofy, but it's, it's pretty old. It's still an old, old gecko. I think we're there for time. All right. We'll do one more, and then we'll uh, jump into the vault. We got Janky Nids at Josh. How you doing today, Josh? I'd like to see the beard coming back. LOL. Anyways, I want to know how you like my little tip for your cult mechanicus list of robot cheese. And that will be even worse with call. Stop helping him. <laughs> okay. Um, I was also wondering when you were going to when we are going to get his beastness out in the field. Uh, playing against Magnus the Red. Hope you have a great day and please square, please scare Quirk or Steve while painting. LOL, thanks. Okay, so <laughs> I was lucky enough to play a game against an orc player named Andrew, who is a super good sport and a super fun guy to play against, and we decided to have kind of goof around fun game and let... <sighs> That's the, the kind way to say this. Not everybody on the internet appreciated that game. <laughs> Is that the one with all the, the nice comments? I didn't bring any robots. Not a one. Um, it's, it's a long story short, yeah, because we filmed actually, because I don't get a lot of 40K pairings. 
Uh, so we filmed that one before Christmas, and it didn't come out till like earlier Last this week. week. Yeah. Because I again I didn't have a pairing for it for the longest time, and I remember because I emailed Andrew back and forth a couple times. I don't think I knew what he played at the time. And so I had my list set up because I wanted to run a list with a knight and not use the robots. And he shows up and he's playing orcs. And I'm, you know, I kind of said straight up, I haven't played against orcs at all except for uh, with my 30k army. So I don't really know how they work that well, but this is my stuff and this is what it does. And Andrew, as like, you know, I think I've kind of got a leg up on you as far as the knight and just the mechanicum overall. Or sorry, the mechanicus. And Andrew was kind of like, yeah, I don't mind losing. And, you know, I think I, I think I can still give you a pretty good fight. Uh, let's see what happens. And I won. And he actually, yeah, he, he gave me a good fight, but I had a lot of firepower. He had a lot of firepower. Yeah, I remember talking to him after the game. He had a lot of fun. Yeah, so it's funny, too, because Andrew's actually, like, I got another game scheduled with him. Yep. Um, but it's the talking point of... Even if you've got a, even if you got two people playing against each other and they're having fun, they're just having a legitimate. Sorry about that, folks. If I got cut off partway through there, uh, we ran into some technical difficulties. Um, twice. So hopefully I fixed them. Da, 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 da. Okay. So yeah. Anyways, talking about the, the 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 mechanicus. Yeah. So Andrew and I had a really fun game. We've got more games booked coming up. But that doesn't always translate to enjoyable content. So at the time, I mean, it was a slaughter fest. But I've had games that were slaughter fest before. And a fun time was had by all, including the viewers. So this time it was seen that Andrew and I had a fun time. And the viewers, not as much. There was a couple people that liked it. And like people yeah. weren't like rude about it. But uh, yeah. So in retrospect, uh, I know the orcs are a weaker codex. I got a better idea of how much weaker they are right now. Yeah, they're pretty low tier. But um, that's how she goes. And I guess it didn't help that Quirk and I played uh, Mechanicum versus Grey Knights after. <laughs> so, as far as bringing out Call and some of the other super powerful Mechanicum stuff, maybe you won't see that much of it for the next wall. Maybe you will. I don't know. I can't say for sure. It's um, like it's, a bigger it's, game. It's kind of my go-to 40k army. Um, but yeah, they, they tend to be pretty well. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not a good Mechanicum player. Or sorry, Mechanicus player. Uh, by any means. They're just a easy-to-use army that not everybody is super familiar with. So even like if you explain the rules, if you haven't played against stuff, even if you know the rules, it doesn't sink in the same way. Yep. So we'll see how much. But yeah, like I never run uh, uh, the War Convocation or anything like that. Like any of the really kind of crazy stuff. Yeah. But that is all we got time for right now, guys. Um, Lee and I are going to continue to answer questions in the vault. Uh, so if you're a vault member, click on the link below. It'll take you to the vault where we'll finish this up. If you're not a vault member, you can click on the link below anyways. It'll take you to a seven-day free trial. Uh, you can check out this video as well as everything we all... Uh, Sorry, everything else we have in the vault, uh, everything we do, we do in pairs. So it's twice as much content, lots of fun behind the scenes stuff. Check it out, guys. Uh, keep in mind, next week is going to be uh, Quirk answering questions. So just make sure if you get questions for him, put, uh, you know, at DBQ. It's a new thing we're going to call him. Um, his initials. Leave them in this video. Don't put them in the vault video because if you do, you probably won't get answered. Other than that, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, thanks so much for leaving questions. Keep being awesome, and as always, happy wargaming.